Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Boring Company and SpaceX warehouse updates here at Bastrop, Texas. For today's video, I'm going to talk about two subjects, the first of which has to do with the physical connection between the Boring Company facility on the left and the SpaceX Starlink production facility in the center of the screen. Now, they're divided by FM 1209, which is a pretty busy road. But to get around this, the Boring Company made two tunnels that goes underneath that road and connects those two facilities. So I thought I would talk about that and also just discuss how that uh, Boring Company tunneling process works. I'll be using this slide to discuss the process of making the tunnels. And this is from the Boring Company website. You can see the link here. It's also in the video description if you want more in-depth information. But this slide is great because it pretty much discusses exactly how the two facilities here are connected. Now, if you look at this uh, diagram, you can see that uh, day zero, the proof rock arrives on site. In this case, it's the Boring Company facility. Then by day two, then they launch it. It kind of porpoises down into the ground. And as you can see over the next few days, it tunnels under, in this case, the roadway, the FM 1209. And then about four days later, it uh, surfaces almost like a surfacing uh, dolphin. It's called porpoising, actually. And then by day five, the proof right proc site uh, is pretty much completed, and they're able to wrap up and depart the site. Now, this is what it looks like on the beginning part of the tunnel. This is actually a photo that's taken at the boring facility as they are preparing to do one of the two uh, tunnels that connects over to the Starlink facility. And this image with the upper right hand uh, diagram shows you where these two tunnels cross underneath the road and connect over at the SpaceX Starlink site. And this is exactly how it looks today. And we'll see more of this in the video later on. This image on the bottom left is actually when one of those two tunnels uh, came out of the ground here, that porpoising and surfacing. And you can see the proof rock machine up onto that kind of hill and also some of the concrete uh, tunnel sections uh, lining the tunnel. And then this image here is how the two tunnels look, or at least they did look within the last uh, few weeks as they came out of the site. And today in the video, we'll see some of the updates of how this looks today. So I hope you enjoyed that brief discussion about how these two facilities are joined together and also how the tunneling process works. Now switching gears, I want to talk about the Not A Boring competition that was recently held here in Bastrop, Texas. Now this competition was set up by the Boring Company to inspire innovation within the tunneling uh, processes that are used right now and ultimately to try to be able to tunnel faster than Gary the Snail, which is the marker that uh, the Boring Company uses to uh, uh, measure that to innovation. Now this competition was held at this site. It was uh, uh, joined by five teams from four different countries. Those teams were the University of Colorado and also Virginia Tech from the United States. We had Swiss Loop Tunneling from ETH Zurich, Switzerland. We had the Technical University of Munich from Germany. And also we had the University of Warwick from the United Kingdom. And these teams competed for uh, three top awards, and we'll go over that uh, and the winners here shortly. So here is a few images from the competition this year, and it gives you an idea of uh, what it was like and some of the fun it was had, but also a lot of the hard work. Now, they do have some criteria that the teams are competing against, and generally the idea is to try to do a length of tunnel up to 30 meters in the shortest amount of time. They have a functional cross-sectional area of at least 0.2 square meters, which is equivalent to a circle of about 0.5 meters in diameters. And they also have some uh, competition for the innovation of the work that they have done and the machinery that they put together. So it's quite an interesting competition and it also is definitely inspiring the speed of innovation necessary to uh, construct tunnels in a more efficient and a faster way. And here are the results. The five teams competed, three teams took home awards. The overall winner was the Technical University of Munich, and they were able to do a tunnel length of 11.8 meters. The Innovation Award went to the Swiss Loop Tunneling Team, and the Accuracy and Navigation Award went to the University of Colorado Hyperloop Team. So congratulations to all of those winners and for helping to develop this technology further. 
Now, as I mentioned, there's been some recent articles. I'm going to go over three of them very briefly here. The links are at the bottom of the screen if you want more. But this is from the new civil engineer talking about the Technical University of Munich taking home the overall prize. This is Weevolver. Uh, it's uh, talking about the Swiss Loop tunneling team builds the innovating uh, tunnel and boring machine, winning second place. And of course, this is the University of Colorado from Boulder, the College of Engineering and Applied Science, talking about their third place award with the innovation and the accuracy of the competition. So again, take a look at these links if you want to get all of the details. So you may be wondering, is there going to be another competition next year? And the answer is absolutely yes. It's going to be held back here at Bastrop, Texas at the Boring Company facility. It looks like the registration deadline is the 1st of July, so it's coming up really soon. And the dates is going to be sometime between the 25th of February and the 31st of March, 2024. If you want to see the links uh, to the boring competition rules, it's right here at the bottom of the screen. It will also be in the video description. So I recommend you take a look at that as well. So there you have it. We talked about the Boring Company tunnels that connect the SpaceX Starlink production facility and the Boring Company facilities together underneath Farm to Market 1209 Road and also the Not a Boring competition that was just recently held here and also looking forward to the 2024 competition. I hope you found this information helpful and useful and now let's get ready to get on the drone and fly around the site and see how it looks today. A special thank you to all of my outstanding Patreons for your continued encouragement and support. Patreon members get access to hundreds of high-resolution photos, previews of the future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my channel, please consider becoming a patron using this link, which is also in the video description. Please also consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as this helps as well. Thank you. So we start off today over the Hyperloop Plaza sign and also the structure where the Not A Boring competition uh, was held. You can also see in the field around the building some of the earthwork that was uh, uh, remnants of that competition. So it's pretty cool to see. This view also gives you an idea where this structure is in relation to the main Boring Company uh, campus and that is the fence-lined section with all of those larger structures in it. And we'll get some really close views. I also wanted to turn back quickly to show you where this structure is in relation to the SpaceX Starlink production facility as well. So let's uh, spend some time over at the Boring Company site and we'll get some really detailed views and get a good idea of what this uh, whole area looks like, uh, at least today. And we'll start off here on kind of the northwest corner. Looks like this is a storage location for some steel parts, some uh, uh, looks like rack mounts, and also probably some crane parts as well, and a variety of other items. And it just looks like this is sort of a, a temporary storage location for items that they don't normally use. Now, this section here with the brightly colored orange and yellow items uh, has got a lot of uh, equipment that they are using uh, on a fairly routine basis and we'll get some uh, closer views of that uh, uh, a little later in the video. But as I continue to fly towards the east, I wanted to show you this section of the uh, Boring Company campus. This is where they've prepared uh, slabs and put some of these uh, um, uh, small home units, kind of uh, not quite trailers, more like manufactured homes, but this is for the employees and their families uh, that work here at uh, the Boring Company, and it gives them great access to the facility. It also really helps with the uh, need for places to live and to bring the families around for all of the, uh, the employees. Um, also, there's a, a nice gym with a swimming pool and also a 
a tennis court or a multi-sport court, if you uh, uh, want to call it that way. And uh, this entire east side just uh, gives you a good idea of what this uh, appears like. It's pretty much just a residential area, and it's mostly separated from the uh, actual production site. But uh, uh, anyway, this whole area on the east side has really changed quite a bit uh, at, since the beginning of this year with uh, more of the, the the housing units and also uh, it just looks like more people are living here. So let's uh, get a closer look at where I said they had the swimming pool, a gymnasium. Um, this road around here is called Snail Brook and again Snail comes from the Gary the Snail, which is sort of the metric that they're trying to use to uh, speed up the boring process. It's a very interesting sort of a test tunnel in this red and white striped section. Not exactly clear what that is for, but uh, as we get closer to this Quonset hut and this uh, small uh, warehouse structure that has the Boring Company logo on it. You can see in the corner there of that uh, structure, there's the uh, Gary the Snail emblem, but also we can see some of the parts of the proof rock system undergoing some type of maintenance. Now the white item on the left, I think is the drill head, and then you can see some of the materials and uh, equipment on the inside that is part of the drilling process. Um, there's uh, some interesting rack mounts here with uh, looks like uh, spools of uh, electrical cable and other items next to that uh, Quonset hut. And as I continue to pull back towards the west of this part of the factory uh, or the facility, I'll look back at this large facility on the left that uh, was uh, basically constructed sometime last summer and it now has the Boring Company logo on two sides of that structure. Here we are over FM 1209, which is the road that separates the Boring Company and the SpaceX uh, Starlink site. And this foreground area is where they make a lot of the uh, concrete segments that are used to reinforce the tunnel. And then after the boring is done, this concrete makes that uh, rounded uh, tubular shape and it supports uh, all of the soil and prevents it from uh, collapsing. You can also see those blue items, those were the forms to make that concrete uh, sections. And uh, I'll give you a closer look at that uh, a little later in the video, but I wanted to come back over here next to the crane, show you again parts of the proof rock system undergoing some sort of maintenance here. Um, you can see that uh, cylindrical white item and that kind of tube sticking out. And then on the, the under the brown tarp going into that Quonset hut uh, is uh, more parts that uh, would eventually be assembled together as part of the boring process. So as we continue to fly around uh, this side of the facility, this gives you a really good idea of uh, how this looks with the two tunnels. And these are the tunnels that have been uh, bored underneath the Farm to Market 1209 road and uh, come out over at the SpaceX Starlink facility. Now there's two tunnels which are made differently. The one on the left, uh, right in the center of the screen, this is the newest of the two tunnels and it was completed fairly recently. And it is actually just configured as uh, either for vehicles or walkway. The other one that you see with that sliding door next to that gray trailer, that's actually a Hyperloop testing tunnel. And we'll get a chance to see the other side and uh, how that looks. Uh, but according to the Boring Company site, they've been using that for tests uh, related to the Hyperloop. Uh, this large structure in the corner of the yard is actually part of the system that helps extract the dirt during the tunneling process and it removes it from the proof rock and then it puts it in piles so that that uh, dirt can be removed uh, from uh, the site and allow the tunneling to continue. Now as we are flying over uh, towards the SpaceX Starlink site, uh, this is a good view of where those two tunnels exit onto this site. Also with the building itself, uh, much of the structure is completed. Uh, we see around the structure, the asphalt has been poured. Um, the the uh, curbs have been uh, put in concrete and also marked with the red. And you can see the glass on this uh, corner with that uh, characteristic SpaceX uh, uh, kind of styling with the, uh, the raising black um, 
trim mark around the entrance and then going along this side of the building. As we continue to fly here, it's a good view of all the new parking lots with all the asphalt and all the markings that have been made. Looks like there's some sections that are gonna get grass and then next to the base of the building, they're putting rebar in to pour more concrete. Um, we can also see that uh, on this side of the building, the electrical system um, with all of the uh, equipment has been installed and it looks like it's uh, pretty close to allowing power to be applied to this uh, structure. We also see um, some of the receiving docks on this side have got uh, pretty much all of the uh, the equipment and the bumpers around the doors installed and the doors themselves. Um, there looks like there's a portable air conditioning unit on the ground or on that concrete and it looks like uh, there's some of the dumpsters for more work to be done on the inside. Uh, we also see on the roof, there's at least five HVAC units that have been installed and also quite a bit of skylights have been installed. And I'll give you a closer view of that a little later in the video. But while we're here, I'm going to bring the drone down lower to show you that not only this large door with the ramp and then this concrete section, but also what looks to be some sort of uh, steel pipe system. It may be related to the heating system of the uh, the facility and then across that road you can see all of the electronic components that have been installed as well. So I mentioned uh, the work that's going on on the roof. Uh, you can see those HVAC units that have been installed and also many of the skylights along uh, much of the roof. Now I know that some people have asked are they going to put solar panels on this structure and again, I cannot say, I don't know. Uh, as of right now, I don't see any solar panels that have been delivered, but there's uh, no reason to uh, exclude that as a possibility, at least right now, but it'll be something that I'll just continue to uh, monitor. As I pull back here, it gives you a good view of that roof section and also that glassed in main entrance. And you can see the doors have been installed. And then around the base of the building, um, there's rebar being uh, placed, particularly over where that uh, blue uh, man lift is. And then this all is going to be covered in concrete at some point. While we're here, I'm gonna try to get the drone down lower and give you a really good view of these two tunnels. As I mentioned, the tunnel on the right is the newest of the tunnels. And it's right now uh, got a grate with a door. I think that's to keep uh, animals out. It also allows people to be able to walk through this underneath that road and then uh, exit over at the Boring Company. This one, on the other hand, has this sliding door. And if you can see the logo, it says Hyperloop on it. It's got a little window and it matches the one on the other side. Also looks like they're putting some formwork for some concrete around this section as well. And again, according to the Boring Company site, they are using this to do some testing about the uh, Hyperloop. So two different tunnels with two different purposes right now. So as we continue to fly back towards the Starlink building, I'll bring the drone down a little lower to give you a good view of the inside as much as I can through the glass. Looks like there's at least two levels. It looks like maybe some offices have been uh, put together here on this entryway. You can see the columns inside are painted white and it looks like there's some sort of foyer on the left-hand side of the structure. And as we continue to move towards the north here, um, as that swooping line comes down, it's just harder to see inside, but I'm pretty sure that they're still doing some construction work on the inside. I don't know if they really have any equipment or machinery uh, for production installed quite yet. So as we fly back over the roof, this is a good view of those HVAC units, the skylights as well, and generally how the roof structure looks today. And as we get to this side of the building, uh, I'll give you just another view of where the electrical connections are being made here in the center part. Those uh, kind of the steel pipes that are on that raised uh, mounting system and then how the concrete section looks here. I believe that concrete's gonna extend all the way across this dirt section next to the building. Now, because of the structure being out in the county, I think that they're using a well system. This uh, structure, um, the square one, I think is a well pump room, and then of course the large tank. And I think that they use this to uh, provide the water needs for this entire structure. 
As we continue to fly away from the building here, I just want to point out the old farmhouses that are still here. Um, it does have some of some of them do have solar panels on the roof. It looks like they may still be using them for some purpose. I'm not really sure. These are remnants of what was here before the land was purchased. And uh, for right now, it uh, just looks like there's not a lot of activity here, but for some reason they're being uh, retained. It kind of gives a, a definite country look to an otherwise a very modern uh, SpaceX uh, facility. And of course, there's that roof with those solar panels that I mentioned and a few of the vehicles around there. I'm going to bring the drone back down lower here on the north side of the building to give you a good look at the receiving doors, the bumpers around the doors, the load levelers, and also the doors themselves that have been installed. Above those receiving doors, you see those rectangular windows that have been installed along this entire side of the building. And of course, all of the concrete apron has been completed. Some of the stairs have been completed. And... Uh, we still have some of these uh, trailers that are, I think, offices for the contractors working on this structure. But uh, this low flyby gives you a really good idea of what this part of the structure looks like. Now, I'm trying to give you a little bit of a view inside that very large door, but it's quite dark. It's very difficult to see. But what I can determine in there is that there's a lot of empty space right now. So again, I think that they're still working on the interior of the building, even though most of the exterior looks like it's uh, completed. So I don't think there's any production going on right now uh, at this particular facility. So as I pull away, this will give you a good view from this vantage point about the structure itself, how this side looks, how that front uh, area looks as well. The uh, center median area with all the water is just uh, because of rains, it hasn't completely dried off. I think eventually that's going to be graded to prevent the uh, rainwater from accumulating uh, in, in that section. The material storage location here on the north side um, has got some very interesting steel parts and it looks like there's quite a bit of them. Some of them look like they are potentially beams, maybe some columns, some joining um, steel as well. Uh, it looks to me like it's a lot that uh, would be uh, more than what you would use for the inside of the building. So perhaps we're going to see another structure built, but I'm not really sure at this point in time. It'll just be something that I will continue to monitor. But otherwise, I'll get down lower and you can get a good view of what some of these steel parts are look like uh, from this vantage point. And again, some of these are pretty substantial steel uh, components. Uh, and some of them look like they are beams with those kind of tabs, which allows for connecting structures to be bolted together. So anyway, uh, just a, another observation that I made while I was doing the uh, flight today. But that'll pretty much uh, wrap up the close-in views of both the Boring Company and the SpaceX Starlink production facility. I'll bring the drone up to a higher altitude, fly up to the north, and try to give you a good overall view of how the two structures appear and their relation to each other with the uh, Farm to Market 1209 road running right down the middle and off into the horizon, as you can see. Also, a lot of farmland still is in this particular area with uh, houses that uh, have uh, horses and other animals and possibly are uh, doing some sort of agriculture. But uh, as I continue to pull away, I hope that you enjoyed these long views of both of the structures and many of the areas that we talked about and saw today. As always, thank you very much for your support and for watching. I do hope that you found this interesting and informative. And as always, thank you very much for your support. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.